Alrighty, hello and welcome to the channel, and for today's video, Baranga Savannah. Now this is actually post-commentary, uh, because the majority of this video is clips I recorded while testing. Testing what, you might ask? We'll get to those pieces in a little bit, but the primary thing is, is that Baranga Savannah is more or less working. Uh, it, it still stutters a bit, but basically I had my AIO pump on my 2080 Ti completely kaput, and I had to shoehorn in a redneck engineering of using a pump from another AIO that's like 15 years old, and I wanted to make sure everything still worked. Now, what better than complete torture test with Baranga Savannah? I mean, in the end, you, you kind of have to admit, it is a beautiful map, especially in the early morning. The only downside, of course, is because it runs a little bit of issues with the high performance stuff in 4K, you have to turn down scene complexity, which means at distance, things start to look a little goofy. And the game also having a limited render range means it's kind of pointless being able to have all this open land that you can spot across. But that doesn't mean I can't sit up on my cliffside and, uh, you know, snipe kudus from afar, because that seemed like something fun to do. I'm not gonna lie, I swear I heard a lion while I was sitting there taking photos of this guy. Turns out, I was just hearing things. And while looking for some springbok, I happened across some gemsbok. I did manage to sneak up and get nice and close so I could get this four. Uh, it, it did... He kept moving around on me, so I had to wait for him to finally stop moving long enough for me to actually line up a shot. Now there was a second one I was eyeballing, and uh, since he decided not to spook, I go went ahead and nabbed him too. Easy 1200 cash with a 200 something yard double lung shot, but I was really proud of the 305 yard double lung heart shot on this one. Now, while I was picking that second one up, I had spotted some jackals, and uh, there's one under that tree there, and I thought, what the heck, I'll give it a shot. Only thing I have that can touch a jackal, though, is a compound bow. And I'm pretty sure I missed, because the, he just, he ran off, and honestly, I could barely see him. I was leaning in maybe an inch away from the screen to try and identify which pixel was a jackal, which... Jackal pixels? Yeah. But as I decided to start going through the woods, I found blood on the ground. Turns out I actually managed to hit the bugger. Now, I hadn't gotten hunting pressure yet, so I was still sneaking. And then I did see the hunting pressure, so then I decided to pursue him properly. And there he is. <laughs> kind of sad when you think about it, because... Uh, I wasn't that far off when you consider the size of the animal, but I did shoot him in the butt. So, I didn't, I didn't get full points for a 7. Now, after the jackal, I had seen some Gemsbok across the ways. And this guy, I was watching him for a minute, and I lost him behind this tree. And I barely spotted his horns as he was coming around to me, so I decided to push up the hill and see if I could get a, a top-down look at him. I'd lost him, started looking at a three that was further down the river. Guy decided to jump me. Drop on the spot. And another easy 1180 bucks. 
and I was quite happy. I was able to sneak around past his head, through his neck, and into a lung. So, full points. And a little white dot on the screen tells me there's another Gemsbok at 260-something yards. <sighs> on the spot again. Now, for some reason, every once in a while, when you use the camera, when you put the camera away, you lose the E on your screen. And, uh, you can't get tracks, you can't confirm bodies, you gotta switch weapons to make it come back. Uh, for most people it's E, I have it tied to my mouse. But, there's another 1200 bucks. Now at this point I decided to follow a herd of water... water buffalo? No, uh, wildebeest. Those things. You know, the, the wildebeest. Those. Huge herd. And, uh, it, it, they were actually kind of annoying me, because they were looping at render range, and I'd already been following them around for probably about an hour at this time. And I kept losing them just over the next ridgeline. Now in my pursuit, I had come across a track for a decent sized warthog. I had also gotten some calls from him, so I decided to uh, pursue said warthog. Not a warthog. But seeing as they don't appear to be going aggressive, I'm going to leave them alone and continue after said warthog. Turns out, that might have been a mistake. They'll get the revenge. Now, I actually didn't have any Cape Buffalo in the new lodge, so I decided to keep this one. Yep, still a thing. Still a bit buggy. Now, since these are clips from testing, perhaps you're curious as to what I'm testing for. Well, here's an example. This is not 4K, this is 1080p. More specifically, this is what Twitch would see. I'm attempting to recombobulate my system so that I can record 4K and stream to Twitch in 1080p at the same time. So here's a couple clips as an example of what the quality would look like on Twitch. And quite frankly, I'm actually kind of happy with how it turned out because this is only 6 megabit, it's only 1080p, and I'm actually not using X264, I'm actually using the HD630, which is the iGPU on the 9900K, and I'm using uh, the Intel QuickSync H264. And the only issue I seem to have with it is it occasionally has some kind of color issue. Uh, if I use X264, it's fine with the color. If I use H264, it seems to do limited range. So, something I have to fix eventually.
Now remember that herd of wildebeest I was chasing? Yeah, guess what? Found them. And I even found the one I wanted, uh, well, not the, there was a 629 in there when I originally spotted the herd, and now I can only find, I think, the 584. And, uh, I decided to go ahead and try and nick that 584. But of course, where would the challenge be if Cape Buffalo weren't about to show up? And not just that, but apparently these guys are a wee bit full of themselves in the fact that they seem to think they can just literally walk all over other animals. I'm, I'm not joking. Here, you watch this guy just right over the wildebeest. Of course, once they're gone, it's time to finally try and take down the wildebeest, right? Shouldn't be any problems, right? Told you they'd get their revenge. A Cape Buffalo never forgets, apparently. And of course, to make matters worse, I somehow managed to shoot the wrong frickin' wildebeest. And just for the heck of things, a surprise lion hunt. Why not? I decided my best point, or best plan at this point, would be to try and get into the stand that's just past them. Now it's time to play the waiting game. Maybe a bit few calls just to see if I can bring the bugger back over the hill. In the end though, my impatience got the better of me and I decided to just go in on foot figuring he wasn't gonna come back. Patience is a virtue I was not born with which is probably not a good aspect for hunting. Now at this point he comes into a feed zone and I figure he's gonna sit there for a minute and I'm gonna be able to take a shot, but he takes like two or three nibbles, decides to turn around and head out. So I go for a quartering walking shot, why not? Still got him. Now he's not ginormous, but I'm pretty happy with a 232 yard uh, stomach, left lung, liver shot, as well as the fact that uh, that's almost 1700 bucks right there. Now at this point I've switched back to my normal recording and I'm making sure the normal recording will hold up while also doing the stream encoding and uh, decide to get me a nice long-range kudu shot. I'd say that was effective. Two hundred and twenty-four yard double lung heart shot? Pretty happy with that one. Spotted this hog earlier after I spotted a lion and a lioness walking by, and uh, he's a level four, nothing special. But I decide, why not? The lion and lioness wandered way out of range. This one walking up don't look bad either.
Turns out the lines hadn't wandered as far as I thought. Now, deciding to try and pursue these lines, I stumbled across some springbok and what ended up being a dark brown or a black brown or something like that, but I thought it was melanistic at first. But the only thing I have that I can use to touch a springbok is my compound, so I have to get in good and close. Spoiler, I should have gotten a lot closer. Yes, I get incredibly nervous when there are lines nearby. Not a great shot, but still a rare fur for the lodge. Now I eventually did catch up to the lioness that I'd spotted earlier. Now like all predators, lionesses are worth shooting. I mean, that's probably going to be fourteen to fifteen hundred bucks right there. Except she laid down right as I took the shot, so I'm pretty sure I buggered this one up. Now it's really hard to see, even if I were to try and zoom in and track it, but I see a foot sticking out from under a bush, and there is hunting pressure to go with it, so I'm pretty sure I brought the lioness down. Turns out, there was another one. So this is when I pick up a track for a max weight warthog, and I honestly didn't think much of it. I was really after the lines for the money. So there, even though I screwed it up and only got a stomach vertebrae shot, still 950 bucks. Ain't half bad. Now in my mind, I'm off to go and find this other lion. Now I am in the habit of checking all pig-shaped rocks, simply because sometimes they're not rocks, but pig-shaped because they're pigs. And in this case, it was a really good spot. There's my max weight, level 5 Warthog. Now, of course, wouldn't you know it, the second I actually start to get within a decent shooting range is when they all decide to get up and start moving. I'm going to have to take this shot at range on the trot. And to make matters worse, yes, I pulled the trigger twice before I remember I never reloaded after taking down the last two fours. Well, now that I have identified him again, and I have bullets in the rifle this time, second time's a good go, right? <sighs> Dropped on the spot. You know, I actually really enjoy taking photos in this game. It's not, uh, you can't do as complex things as you can in, uh, classic, but the engine just really produces some, some quite unique and beautiful images. And sure enough, there it is. 194 yard, double lung, liver, on the trot shot to get me another diamond. And my first diamond warthog. Wow, that's a look of surprise right there. All right, so there's our level five warthog. Wow, that's that's an amazing image right there. <laughs> and I'm actually kind of curious. Let's see, what does that make it now? Ah, I have 10, apparently. 10? I really hit 10 already. <laughs> I mean, sure, that may not sound like a lot, but keep in mind, I don't play multiplayer. It, th that's strictly off my maps, but the only population resets being the ones that the developers do. So quite happy with that, actually. All right, so that being said, that's pretty much the it for the hunting clips at this point. Now, in the next video, what I'd like to do is a nighttime line hunt. Why, where, how, all that kind of stuff. Come on, I uh, did cover that in the next video. But I do have to make an address. Do I have to make an address? I have to address something. Somehow there's proper English way of saying what I just said. Oh, I really thought that was a Gemsbok laying down. It's a rock. At the end of this video, you're going to notice something different. 
I have started a Patreon page. Now, I already know. I'm getting way ahead of myself here. The channel is still too small to think that that could possibly work. But, uh, give me a minute here to play my little violin. Uh, the whole phrase being, let me play you the world's smallest violin. I initially started this channel about four years ago. And I've had to take a break from it once before due to finances. Even now, it's a greater challenge to actually make these videos on a regular basis. As you can imagine, until that 3000 series drops, <laughs> and until people can afford them, there's Wildebeest over there, I can hear him. The 2080 Ti is a very capable card, but just barely. So, usually when it comes to making one of these videos, it's about a 24 hour turnaround time. Meaning that from the moment I sit down and start recording to the moment it's actually available on YouTube in 4K is about 24 hours, more often than not 26. And if anything, anything at all goes wrong, a uh, file gets partially corrupt, uh, I screw up a setting, it's too hot outside, my internet has a, a, a brownout, which for those of you who don't know, uh, that's like a partial disconnect. Basically, you still have internet, but for anything like an ongoing upload stream, YouTube added a thing that was supposed to help with that doesn't really help. Basically what happens, they're like, oh, it'll resume lost uploads and whatnot. Not so much. I've actually had issues where I've uploaded a video and it processes the 1080p version and then takes another 24 hours for some reason to get 2K or 4K done. Don't ask why, I don't know. But long and the short of it is, I've started a Patreon account. There are four tiers and the tiers mean nothing. Uh, <laughs> they're all the same right now. I haven't figured it out. This is for the option, if you are willing and able, to help support the channel. Not a necessity, although being truthful here, there are two goals on that page. And the first goal says to keep the channel alive. That's not uh, being dramatic, that is the bare minimum. I have maybe two or three months left, and then the finances I set aside to attempt this are gone. There's your opportunity to support. Now, the second goal is to get ahead of things. So when I say get ahead of things, there is the fact that there are many improvements I can make. I don't run the game flat out. Ooh, I, I did hear Gimspock over here. He's not a biggin, but I might shoot him for the money. Better graphics card, better display, try and work on introducing HDR, better frame timing, which could come from faster renders. So right now I cannot render beyond 60 FPS. I can. But it, then I only hit like 80, and anyone who's ever done anything with this stuff knows that if it's not a multiple of 60, it's going to look like garbage. Until you start getting into the multiples of hundreds where few people will be able to tell the difference. So as discussed earlier, I want to start streaming again. As far as Patreon tiers, bringing on special things for the different tiers, I'm still working on that. So I've actually had a Discord server for a couple years now, I just haven't done anything with it because I don't know how. Uh, among my things of I have to teach myself, that's one of them I just haven't gotten to yet. But I'd like to. But right now, one of the reasons the videos are coming out less and less is because I'm having to focus more on the fact that this may be a dying pipe dream. Uh, it sounds horrible when you put it like that. But it's the truth. I'm shooting this Gemsbok. Where'd you go? I was like, yeah, of course you would move the second I figure out where you are. There you are. 300, right? Okay, I'm not 100% sure why the audio is stupid loud right there. Well, that doesn't make a lick of sense. I just clipped out my recording. And th this, th right there, that's, that's, that's something right there. I haven't changed any audio settings since yesterday. Why is everything louder? This is ridiculous. It's like my microphone. This is max volume. I, I'm, I'm modifying it in post. For some reason, just transferring my GoXLR Mini from the recording rig to the rendering rig dropped at 6 dB. Couldn't tell you why. I've made sure all the settings are right. I've gone through everything. There's absolutely no call for it. And yet it is. I, did I kill him? I didn't actually check. I guess so. I could have stuck with 1080p. 1080p would be easy. Hell, 1440p would probably be easy. Where? Right there. What are you? Another three. Yeah, why not? Money. I think they'll pull at like 1100. Yeah, that's an... He just went down right there in the grass? Okay. Why is that so loud? That doesn't... That doesn't... That doesn't even make sense. Oh, there's the first one. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna say we nicked him pretty good. Yep, see, there's 1130 right there. Uh-oh. 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 
right there. I don't know what happened to my frames right there, but Bronga Savannah, man, such a hard man. Oh my god. Uh, well, now I got another zone. So there's a line over there. Should probably be careful of that. Didn't I kill another Gimsbach over here? Yeah, behind. Wait. I know it's not an actual possibility, but it would be so cool if they added, like, interactions with the downed animals. Because part of me wants to believe that that line may have eaten my damn Gimsbach. Oh, wait. Here's blood. I thought he went down right here. Somewhere in the tall grass, there's a dead Gimsbach. Somewhere in the tall grass, there's an alive lion. Hmm. Oh, there he is. There's 1111. Anyways, enough of that. So that's basically what's going on. So, don't be afraid when you see the stuff at the end of the screen. Not a necessity, just a curiosity. See if it actually does any good. Uh, one of the tiers even says bring 4K back, because as of yesterday, I honestly thought I wasn't going to be able to do 4K anymore, because something broke, and it took me like four hours to figure out what in God's green earth went wrong. Ah. <sighs> Look. God dang. Money. <laughs> this is why I can't go to the Savannah map with the 300. I can't make it five feet without a distraction. Not a bad looking one. Ooh, that one actually made gold. 290. Wow, he was actually a big one. Still, 1209 cash. All right, but that being said, that does it for this one. So there are buttons if you liked it, buttons if you didn't, and as always, buttons to push. Until next time.